also I wanted to tell you guys about another song that's kind of one of our signature heart songs that people ask me so much about, and especially the introduction part of the song called Mistral Wind. Um, the idea for the song was really cool. It, it, uh, it was one of those songs you knew you were going to write something about the indefinable it of life, you know? Cause, uh, and so we were sitting around, my sister and I, Anne and I, and our friend Sue, who wrote it with us, waiting for inspiration to strike us as if almost like the way a sailboat waits for the wind to pick it up and take it somewhere. So that's actually how we got started. Like, we feel like we're a sailboat waiting to be taken by the wind. Anyway, the song turned out to be about that, and, and we called it Mr. All Wind. And the words were so cool, I thought, that I uh, wanted to, to write something really unusual for the beginning of the song that, that takes it from small to big, just like the way a wind would take a boat out to sea. So real introspective and moody at the beginning, um, I used like the most dissonant oddball notes I could come up with, and like this. <laughs> is your um, fourth fret, bottom string, low E. You go up a, ho a half step there. And then the next note is on your fifth string, third fret. So that's a. And now you make a weird chord, leaving that one there. You put the uh, first one back where it first started, and your little finger which is some kind of weird jazz chord that I don't know what it's called. So the whole thing is... And then you do the same thing a whole step lower, two frets down. Which brings you down to your F chord. Which, of course, I can't just leave it barred. I have to open up the top. Using the vibrato like that kind of helps it not sound as wrong. It makes it sound like you meant to do it. <laughs> so it gives it some kind of an authority, and it makes it sound more like water. And that's the beginning of Mr. All Land. So then the song continues. Um, on the F chord, kind of opening and closing, and then an A chord with uh, this finger sort of off and on. You can take different variations of your fingers on or off the open chord, you just need these two basically to stay on. So you can... You can do different things inside of it. And that's just an A... Um, that's just, you know, one thing you're second finger on the second fret on your fourth string, you could slide it up a whole step, and then a half step, and another whole step. It's a nice, cool D minor six chord, <laughs> or so they say. Um, but in the booklet, you'll have all of the names of these chords for you, which I rarely know myself. <laughs> and then another oddball chord that I love, 
which, you know, somebody will tell you what it's called, not, not me, <laughs> but it's your third, fifth string, third fret, you leave your D string open, and then bar these three on the top, on the first fret. With, and you can also add your little finger up on the third, first string, third fret. Back down to your A chord. And then your intro again. So that's that same part. of that that I go to up a little bit higher, which is up here, which kind of turns into a D, another cool D minor 7 type chord, some kind of a suspended something or other, it goes to a D minor 7, and then back to that other weird, it's got a second in it, so I'm not sure what it's called. That one again. Back to your A. And then the the the, the reintro kind of goes. That's the last little part of the introduction. Starts the same. But then you go to a open E with one of the stranger intervals known to man. That one. <laughs> Has, it goes by many names. And then your A, again, to sort of play it in sequence.